tonight for our blogger throwdown, let's welcome in the left corner, Anthony Mammel, editor of AmazingBrew.com, representing Michigan. And in the right corner, we have Ross Fulton of 11warriors.com, representing the Ohio State University. Now, it's rivalry week, gentlemen, so while you two must hate each other, let's keep all answers under 30 seconds. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's get it on. All right, let's start off with Anthony. Last week, Michigan used both Devin Gardner and Denard Robinson very heavily in the offense. Devin at quarterback. Denard was moving all over the place. Is there any way Ohio State will be able to get a pin on where those guys will be next, next week? I don't see it happening. Um, Brady Hoke at his press conference actually talked about this, how he ran the full house set with Denard Robinson in the backfield, specifically to target Ohio State practice time to make them work on it more. Um, they're going to see Devin Gardner in the ace and in the eye, Denard Robinson running speed options. There's Devin Funchess, Jeremy Gallon. There's just too many wrinkles in the offense to prepare for. All right, Ross, what do you think? Gardner and Robinson will both they had a lot of success last week against Iowa. Will they be able to have as much against Ohio State? <clears throat> Well, it was also Iowa, who basically has D3 talent on defense at this point. So I think that alone gives Ohio State a bit better of a chance. And uh, as Anthony's answer suggested, uh, Michigan has some serious tendencies going. Uh, when Denard's in the game, when he's not, when he's in there at quarterback, it's probably going to be an inverted V or zone read play. Uh, Devin Gardner comes in, as he said, it's going to be more uh, traditional pro style. So Ohio State should be able to uh, adjust accordingly with an ever-improving defense. Three televisions in Iowa just shut off as he was answering the question. All right, Ross, let's look at Braxton Miller. If Denard Robinson was fully healthy and played QB this weekend, do you think Miller has what it takes to outshine him? I do. Um, I, th I think that uh, obviously both great runners, but I think Miller just as a runner has is more all around uh, talent than Robinson. I also think that the offense that Braxton in is uh, tailor made for him as opposed to the square peg and round hole that was Al Borges and Denard Robinson. All right, Anthony, let's talk about Michigan's defense, which has struggled at times this season. Do you think they'll be able to contain Braxton? I, mean, I think the key words there are at times. You know, the first two games against Air Force and Alabama, they obviously struggled. Since then, uh, they climbed all the way to the 12th ranked total defense. Um, I think they still can contain Ohio State fairly easily. Wisconsin did so. They needed overtime to score 21 points, and Wisconsin's the 11th-ranked defense. So I think Michigan gets it done. Now, Anthony, Urban Meyer calls Michigan that school up north, while Brady Hoke refers to Ohio State as just Ohio. Besides the refusal to say each other's name, which coach has the edge coming into the game? Uh, Brady Hoke, hands down, he's already won one of these games. You know, he's 1-0 against Ohio State. Uh, then he has Greg Madison. Greg Madison is responsible for a lot of the success that Urban Meyer had at Florida. So I, you have to give the edge to, to uh, Brady Hoke. But Brady Hoke's win came against something called Luke Fickle. <laughs> that, that is true. Ross, your rebuttal. Urban Meyer got the edge? Absolutely. Urban Meyer is one of the pioneers of the uh, power spread option offense. Uh, Brady Hoke doesn't even wear a headset on the sideline, so I'm not even sure if he knows what's going on during the game or if he just was worried last week about Hostess going out of business. Oh! <laughs> that was pretty strong. That was pretty strong. All right, Ross. Even though the Buckeyes <laughs> can't play in a bowl game, they can still technically win the AP National Championship. Will they stay on track this weekend with a win over the Wolverines? Let's get down to brass tacks. I think so. As uh, you know, Ohio State for the seniors, um, this is essentially their bowl game, their national championship all rolled into one. Uh, if they win, they go out as one of the uh, handful of undefeated teams in Ohio State history. So I think uh, motion is going to be running high and uh, going to carry Ohio State over the top. All right, Anthony, if you don't play in the BCS championship, should the Buckeyes ever get the chance to be called a champion? And will they keep their undefeated season intact against Michigan? No, I mean, they shouldn't be able to be called a champion. It doesn't even matter what I say because the NCAA hammer says that they can't be called a champion. And, um, you know, I, I still don't see Ohio State beating Michigan. Michigan's defense is too strong, uh, too many wrinkles on offense, as I said before. Uh, I just think Michigan, you know, stays 2-0 and under Brady Hoke against Ohio State. Ooh, this one's tough. This one's tight. All right, we need a tiebreaker. So we know it's rivalry week, and we know these guys hate each other, these two schools. 
I want to hear your guys' best knock against the other team. Anthony, go ahead. You go first. Well, we're talking about right, jokes I, and I, slander. Yeah, yeah, right. of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just end the show here with uh, words of the great Bob Eufer. Uh Let's not forget that Ohio is still a four-letter word. Ooh, oh, that's right. pretty solid. All right, Ross, what you got? Well, I just think Urban Meyer is going to have a huge advantage this week because, as I said, on uh, Thursday, Brady Hoke's going to be more worried about whether there's going to be stuffing left at the uh, Golden Corral as opposed to planning for Ohio State. <laughs> Bad jokes! <laughs> Bad jokes! Oh, yeah. Those always work well with Reese. Who's the winner? You have to pick this one. You have to pick. Oh, I'm, I'm giving thinking, this one to you. I'm I, hey, this to you. even though Ross took a knock at Brady Hoke for not wearing a headset, Bobby Bowden never wore a headset half the time. I got to give it to Ross. He brought some strong points. He brought it strong. <laughs> I love the hostess cakes one too. Anything about the fat jokes? I'm giving it <laughs> to right, Ross. He, he likes to call. <laughs> he likes to call people overweight. You can check his Twitter feed to see some of the back and forth he's gotten into with his fans. Pigs have been thrown around. I want to thank Anthony Mammel of MazeInBrew.com. Also, make sure you check out JDK and Ray. Close the deal with the ladies. And I want to thank Ross Fulton of 11Warriors.com and new champion of the Blogger Throwdown. You are watching Unite, ESPN's very first late night show. Make sure you watch every weeknight at midnight on ESPNU and tell your friends. Hit us on Twitter at Unite and like us all on Facebook.